Hey guys, Shadow here, and today we're just going to take a look at, uh, this is my, well, we're not taking a look at it, because you guys probably already saw it, but um, we're going to take a look at my opinion on the uh, Xbox One. Uh, now, I was lazy, didn't really rip anything off the internet, didn't download anything, so we're pretty much just on YouTube. And so, shout out to Center Strain right here. This is a YouTube video. Thank you very much. Um, but honestly, I mean, the Xbox One. I mean, we're gonna. I'm gonna just hit the play button here. And first off, let's start with the console itself. I mean, look at it. It's huge. I mean. That's that's pretty damn huge. I mean, it looks almost a little bit like a cross between the original Xbox and a Super Nintendo-ish kind of thing, or Nintendo. As you can see, um, it has a uh, a uh, disc slot, so you can actually put your uh, discs in instead of a disc tray, which is a cool concept. I mean, the PlayStation 3 had it. And so it would be kind of silly to not expect the uh, new Xbox or Xbox One to have it. So let's keep moving along. Now moving on to Connect. This is the new Connect sensor here, and supposedly this Connect is can actually uh, read your body in a, a 1080p at 30 frames per second. This is pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie, but later after we'll go into the the, the things that I don't like about the Xbox One and uh, whatever pretty much everybody else is saying as well. kind of liking the new controller, but then again, that D-pad looks freaking flat as hell. I mean, I have pretty big finger, well, yeah, I have decent sized hands, so, uh, I mean, it's kind of okay. I mean, it's still the same basic concept design, uh, which is smart. I didn't expect them to change that at all. If it wasn't uh, the, the same concept design, that would have been really quite stupid. I think on their part to go with a completely different design. I for one prefer the PlayStation 4 design or the PlayStation 3 design. I've always been a dual shock guy. So uh I'm not liking the controller very much, but then again, it is quite cool. I do like the joysticks. And uh I I kind of like the look of it. It's pretty cool. This is all the th all three of the devices lined up together. But now I'm going to tell you why I don't believe in the Xbox One and I don't believe you guys should get an Xbox One. One for one for a couple of reasons. The reasons are very actually important. Um Xbox One is going to require you to have an online internet connection um within a 24 hours of it starting up. So, let's say you know, you went to a cabin for some reason, and they somehow had electricity, but you didn't have an internet connection. You would have to have had an internet connection 24 hours prior to bringing your Xbox up there. So once your limit on your internet connection comes down to zero, and you don't have any internet up there, let's say you're staying two days there, um, you're not going to be able to play your Xbox for two days. I mean, it's going to have had to have had internet connection for the 24 hours prior prior so this also goes for people overseas that are fighting 
you know, in Afghanistan and all that stuff, you know, all this, all these people defending their our country with their lives, and now they can't play Xbox One because they don't have an internet connection. That is bullshit. And you know, honestly, I'm not, I'm not a fan of you know assholeish Marines. But for every other fighter out there that is defending our country with their lives, they deserve to play a video game. Another reason why I believe you should not buy an Xbox One is because they are banning, well they're not banning, but if, let's say, you know, if you buy a used game, you're going to have to pay the, the same amount as a, a, a new one. I'm uh, reading it, I read it on uh, Kotaku right here. I don't. I'm not exactly on the on the uh, on the uh, article right now, but from what I've read is uh, even though you buy it used, you're going to have to pay the same price as a uh, as a new game, which I don't understand. Why Why do you want to you know uh, take away this uh, extra this you know this extra thing for the people so you know, we can play our friends' video games, you know, we can try it first, and then if we like it, then we can buy it. That's the same thing with rentals. You you can't expect people to pay full price, $60 for a video game. That is a lot of money. It's not like, it's not like, the, you know, the days of, uh, you know, uh, uh, PlayStation, you know, PlayStation 1. I could go to a game place and get a uh, Trash Bandicoot brand new for 20 bucks. And that was in the 90s. I mean, yeah, take you know, the, the economy was a lot better there, which I don't understand, because the economy was so good there, they could have charged more. They could have been charging our, the same prices that we're, char we're getting charged now. Uh, you know, and the economy being so shitty as it is today, why are they charging so much for a video game? People have to eat, you know? I mean, and uh, this is for poor people. I mean, I don't... I'm not I don't I'm not partnered yet. You know, I am partnered. I can't get monetized for my videos, but it's not like I'm not I'm not up there with, you know, Boogie 2988 or Angry Joe Show or anything like that. You know, Tobuscus, I'm not up there with them. So, you know, I'm still working class. I can and, you know, and on top of that, I'm not going to be able to pay for $60 games. I at most uh, I buy brand new games like four times a year. That's it. I only buy four titles a year so far. That's because I can't afford to buy every game that comes out. You know, because you know it's not it's not reasonably priced. I don't care who you are. It's not. It's it's a ripoff. I under you know I understand that it takes multi millions of dollars to make these games, but, but you got to understand from a consumer standpoint, sixty dollars. Is a hundred is is almost a hundred dollars. That's sixty percent, you know, of you know of a hundred, you know, of course. But you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pay sixty dollars for you know a new game, unless it's something I really really like. And getting rid of a used games market and not letting your friends borrow your games to try it out, that's just going to eliminate more revenue for Xbox. This is it, Xbox One. Now, going back to Always Online is that you're even going to have to have an online connection for single player, which is really ridiculous when you think about it. And I, I don't understand how that how that's fair. How is that supposed to work? Especially, you know, like I'm I'm gonna go back to the you know people in war again. How are they supposed to enjoy this system? You know, and then people that don't have internet connection, how are they supposed to enjoy this system? Not everybody in the United States has high speed internet. It's not, you know, it's not everywhere yet. I just, this is shocking and it's very disappointing and it's sad that Microsoft is being this 
greedy on this console. This system is built to amaze on day one and continuously improve over the generation ahead. I'm going to now fast forward to uh, Call of Duty. Mm. I know uh, a lot of people don't like it, and uh, the game is wicked, wickedly overdone. Right, I'm, I'm losing my touch in Call of Duty. I was just playing uh, Call of Duty 4 last night and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 last night, and those are pretty freaking good. Still. And didn't run into hardly any hackers either, which is nice. Uh, ran into one on Call of Duty 4, but that's about it. Let's jump into Call of Duty Ghosts. Infinity Ward, capturing the creative process as the vision for this game has unfolded. And we wanted you to be the first to go behind the scenes and take a look at what they've been up to. Here at Infinity Ward, we've had a great time crafting the benchmark of the modern day shooter on current gen. And we're really excited that we get to be the studio that brings Call of Duty into the next generation. We have a Now jumping into the Call of Duty engine, this new engine they're bringing out. It's brand new, supposedly brand new Call of Duty engine. It's, you know, updated to all hell. Um, okay, the grass doesn't even have anti-aliasing. Give me a fucking break whole new story with brand new characters, completely new world, and this is powered by a new next-gen engine that gives us amazing graphic fidelity and really innovative new ways to play the game. So what we Let's take a look at the guy here. I mean, that's pretty damn good graphics, yes, but it's nothing groundbreaking, you know? I mean, it still looks like a 360 guy, you know? He could still be on Xbox 360. This is pretty much just... Um, it looks like update, slightly updated Battlefield 3 graphics on console. It's not Battlefield 3 graphics on, on, on PC. There's nothing impressive. What we wanted to do is create a cast of characters that you really felt more emotionally attached to. We had the opportunity to work with Steven Gagan. This is the guy that won an Oscar for writing Traffic. He wrote and directed Syriana. What they really wanted in this game, in Call of Duty Ghosts, is they wanted emotional reality you know they wanted these characters to feel real to feel like real people let's stop this here and look at the actual details in the head there's hardly I mean it looks like a 360 guy this is not impressive at all I mean it might be on 360 but wouldn't it make sense to have this uh, this new this you know this 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 presentation everything on Xbox one this does not look I mean it looks like yeah, there is no, there is anti-aliasing on his nose and on the shadow, but the model itself does not look like a next generation um, um, character model. So the story opens up with a mass event. America is crippled. Our military forces are devastated. Our government's in disarray. And as the player, you are actually the underdog, fighting back against these superior forces. So the team you're a part of is formed from the remnants of all the US Special Forces. Ghosts are a super elite fighting force to like the Spartans all the way through SEAL Team 6. They've adopted every technique that's useful for modern, urban, guerrilla style fighting. One of the fascinating new additions to your squad is a dog. We've had dogs in Call of Duty before, but never like this. This is someone you can- Let's take a look at this model. Like I was saying earlier, nothing is really um, mind blowing here. It still looks like a 360 model. This could easily probably be rendered on the 360. I don't know if this is three, 360 gameplay or a 360 trailer. Forgive me if it is, but this this looks like 360. Uh, this this doesn't look like uh, an Xbox One uh, character model. Care about this is a squad member. He does everything from sniffing out explosives to protecting the team. So with this next Call of Duty being in a new world on a whole new storyline, one of the things that we wanted to do to support that was create a new engine. Now this looks like a next generation um, deal here, but even though it kind of looks, I mean, it kind of looks like a uh, next generation deal. It doesn't look that that good. It looks kind of like a Crisis Three um, environment. This doesn't really look groundbreaking. 
our goal this game is to make brand new next gen characters and weapons that's never been seen before in a Call of Duty game. We have a new tech in the game, Sub D. The idea is, is the closer you get to it, the more it tries to maintain any curvature that you see. This is very helpful. Now let's look at the gameplay here. This um, doesn't, I mean, it, it, it looks a little bit better than a 360 game, but not by far that much. I mean, it's not really that of a leap in graphics here. On weapons, the helmets for characters, that makes a huge difference for visual fidelity of what the player sees from a distance as well as close up. With a new next gen console, this is an opportune time for us to reinvent the experience that we deliver. It's important to keep our core philosophies about gameplay drives tech. So when I think about the animation features that we've been working on for Call of Duty Ghosts, one of the, the first things that come to mind is immersion. We have a new mantle system so that when you're running quickly and you hit a now looking here, this definitely looks like a next generation clip from a from a next generation game. This could definitely be easily an Xbox uh, One um, gameplay here. It looks phenomenal. I must say, it looks like I said phenomenal. It's awesome. Um, I don't I don't know about the other you know the other clips. It could have been an early beta or e that could have been alpha clips, beta clips. I don't know. But this definitely looks like an Xbox One um, environment. Wall, you get this nice boom, you hit it and you leap and you go and you just maintain your momentum. But we have the lean feature that allows you to lean out and lean in. And uh, The new lean feature is actually a very popular feature on uh, PC, PC games like um, Counter-Strike Global and all that stuff. But you can also do that on, uh, on a uh, console. Well, uh, overall, there's always been pretty much a lean feature in every PC shooter, but I mean, this is kind of cool. It's a very cool new addition to Call of Duty. It'll help. Um, also, again, you know, this environment definitely looks ne next generation. You get a better view of the battlefield. So another feature that we're working on with animation is the slide. It allows you to get somewhere quickly, get out of the line of fire, and at the same time do it in a really cool looking way. We've added fluid dynamic. This definitely looks like a next generation uh, environment. Interactive smoke and also added an AI system to it. So we have fish move out of the way when you get close to them. Fish moving out of the way isn't exactly next generation technology. I mean, come on. I think uh, Jaws Unleashed on the Xbox and the PS2 had that feature. Uh, you know, and... Uh, the the new smoke dynamics that is pretty cool I must say, um, but that's nothing new on a PC you know it's nothing really groundbreaking, but it is on the console, and that's that's actually really quite cool, um, but yeah let's just keep watching this. The poly counts, the texture increases, the shaders, the lighting, tech, the level should feel like you're really there, and all the technologies going into it allows you to achieve those goals. With this being an all-new Call of Duty, we've really taken this opportunity to revamp multiplayer. One of these new MP features that I'm most excited about is dynamic maps. We have everything from big earthquakes and floods down to player-driven actions, doors, explosive traps, things that change the flow of the map. All of this creates a new dynamic experience for the player. Another new feature is character customization. You can choose the heads, you can choose the bodies, you can choose the helmet and gear that you're wearing. You can connect with who you are as a player more so than we've ever done in the past. Now this is a very awesome and welcome change to the Call of Duty franchise. My biggest gripe with the, the Call of Duty franchise is the same deal over and over every year. This is going to be really cool. I, I really, really do hope that they really push this new customization feature and uh, maybe even having Call of Duty as a launch title that would be amazing and that would be that would be a, a, a day one seller for me because I do enjoy I do enjoy Call of Duty it's a fun game it's a fun arcade shooter it's something you know where I can sit down and say okay not gonna take anything seriously and uh, you know and just have fun on this game it's a fun game I mean yeah I mean it's pretty fun I like it <laughs> Dynamic maps and character customization are just two of the new innovations that we're bringing to next-gen multiplayer. We have the best fans in the world, and we're committed to creating for them a new next-generation Call of Duty experience. One of the best fans. <laughs> okay, <laughs> whatever. 
The key reasons Call of Duty has been as successful as it is, is we focus on gameplay. It's the thing we design for. It's the thing that drives our success as a franchise. And with all of the new tech, all of the new story elements, everything that we're putting into this next generation Call of Duty, we are still 60 frames a second, low latency controls, a great feeling game. And that's pretty much the Xbox. Uh, I mean, there's put you know, there's other stuff in the Xbox reveal. You can go ahead and watch it. Uh, Center Strain Zero One's uh, profile, you know, on his YouTube channel. But uh, that's pretty much my opinion on the Xbox One. I was n I was not impressed at all. I think they dropped the bomb on what they wanted to do, especially in terms of what they wanted to show off. And I personally didn't think. Uh, the uh, the video, you know, the TV stuff. That's just not important. Games should come first on a video game console. Now, that's just my opinion. Um, Sony's doing this. They're sti sticking with the video games. You know, other TV related stuff is coming next time, or you know, it's an afterthought. It's not a priority. And I'm gonna have to go with the PS4. You know, I'm a I'm gonna say I'm gonna buy a PS4. I'm not gonna buy a three six or an Xbox One. It's silly, and the whole not being able to borrow and sell used games. I mean, that's just that's horrible. You know, me and my my cousin, we always uh, you know we share games back and forth, and this 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 pretty much just ruins everything you know it doesn't ruin everything but it ruins the fact that we can't borrow borrow each other's games now and that's that, all it is is a greedy company wanting more money take care shadow out